everyone, it's Anna and today I'm going to be showing you how to groom a long haired dog. Today for this demonstration I will be using a Sheltie, otherwise known as a Shetland Sheepdog. So if you read my blog you will have read the differences between a single coated long haired dog and a double coated long haired dog. And Teddy is a double coated long haired dog and if you did read that you will have read about impacted coat and you will see some of this on Teddy. So I'm going to just take you through some of the techniques I use to remove the impacted coat and then once that's all gone we'll focus more on how to actually groom a long haired dog, how to brush them, how to get the shape you want in them, the tools I use, the products I use. So without further ado let's get started. So as you can see as I move the dryer through Teddy's coat he does have quite a bit of impacted hair. This basically means his undercoat wasn't successfully removed before and now it has become tangled and matted within his top coat. So in the bath, I am going to use a technique that I will talk you through step by step to remove this. So now that I have Teddy in the bath, you will see I have him completely dry when I apply this conditioner on him. Today I am using the Chris Christensen Smart Rinse Conditioner just because I think it's what works best with Teddy's hair and his coat type. Um, I am applying this on his dry coat and I'm really, really massaging it in there. I sometimes like to also use the Grim Professional Rubber Scrubber to make sure I'm getting it right deep into the roots of his hair. So once I have this all lathered through his coat, I'm gonna blast all the conditioner through to make sure it's evenly spread out. So now that you have the conditioner blasted through his coat, what you wanna do is rinse all the conditioner off. This does seem like a sort of back to front process, but I promise it is the most effective way to really loosen and get out this impacted coat. It's honestly the only technique I've used that it has always been successful in doing this. It can be a little bit of a repetitive process, but it's one of those things where you just have to trust that it's gonna work. And it might seem time consuming, but I promise you're definitely gonna get the best results and that coat is gonna look amazing once you're finished. So after you have the conditioner all rinsed throughout the coat, what you're gonna do next is grab your shampoo. Today I am using the Grim Professional Dirty Dog Shampoo. This has to be probably my go-to shampoo. I just love it to bits. I love the way it smells and the way it works through really dirty and greasy coats is just something I have never seen another shampoo do. It just gets the best results ever. So you're gonna to wanna to even that out all over your dog's coat and you really, really want to go and scrub this through, really, really get down and into it. Because if you think about it, you think you're massaging the shampoo through, but you need to consider the fact a lot of black coat is impacted and you're not actually going to get that shampoo right down through the skin because it's going to trap it before it actually seeps in. So you really, really want to use your fingers and use the rubber scrubber because it's going to take some of the workload out of it for you. And massage that all throughout the dog's body and coat. So same sort of a thing again, once you have it all massaged through, you're gonna take your blaster and you're gonna blast the shampoo throughout the coat. This is gonna make sure that you've really, really evenly distributed the shampoo throughout all that impacted hair and it's gonna be squeaky clean for your dog getting out of the bath. Um, it's also gonna ensure that the hair follicles are going to be clean and much, much easier to slip and slide out when you're trying to blast through. Throughout this bathing video, you will start to notice uh, Teddy's impacted hair becoming a little bit looser, which is just amazing. I think this is the most satisfying groom you can ever do. Although when you're told like, oh, the dog has an impacted coat, you might go, go oh, that is so annoying. That's gonna take me ages. Every time I am completely amazed by the results because it's just one of those really, really satisfying things you can do and it's so so helpful for the dog like having an impacted coat isn't really the most comfortable thing it's just sort of like a curly haired dog being mad at now you will see me repeat this process a few times i'm going to go back in with my conditioner do the exact same thing lather it all through his body massage it right down deep into his skin blast through rinse shampoo again blast through rinse and i'll probably do it a few more times just so I am really, really sure that impacted hair is becoming looser and looser and looser because ultimately that is gonna make the brushing and the rest of the groom so much easier for me and it'll be so much easier on my hands if I can get a lot of this out while we're still in the bath. 
So moving on to drying, as you see, I still have Teddy in the bath and he is absolutely soaking wet. So before I take all my dogs out of the bath, I always like to give them a really thorough towel dry. This just gets all that excess water off the surface of the coat and sort of speeds up the high velocity drying process, um, which you wouldn't think because a towel versus a high velocity dryer, but it really, really does. I recommend everybody towel dries before they start to blast their dog through. So before I begin to blast Teddy's coat through, a product I'm gonna use is one of, again, another one of my favorites. It is the Groom Professional Fast Dry Spray. I actually don't know how I ever lived or groomed without this because it really does quicken up the drying process and it also smells absolutely amazing. So I'm gonna spritz this all around Teddy's body and it's really gonna speed up that drying process for us. So I actually really, really recommend, recommend this product and it is something I will probably never go a day in my life without using again, especially on thicker coated dogs. So as I'm drying Teddy, you're gonna see me use a few different techniques here. One of the ones that is most successful in loosening up that impacted coat underneath is a very vigorous hand movement. You'll see me do this under his chin area. That's where I found I didn't work the conditioner and shampoo in hard enough in the bath, so therefore it couldn't become looser in the bath. So I'm gonna have to do a lot of work with my dryer in order to get this loosened up. So you'll see what I do is I just hold the dryer as usual, but I'm going really, really fast, back and forth, back and forth, um, just to really, really loosen up that impacted hair underneath. You wanna make sure when you're holding the dryer this close to the dog's skin that you are moving it fast because if your dryer tends to heat up, that could really, really burn your dog's skin and do a lot of damage. So if you're gonna hold the dryer close to your dog's skin, make sure it is constantly, constantly, constantly being moved and not staying in one place. So another technique you're gonna see me use is the open close technique or open close, I actually, I'm not too sure, but it's a technique I use all the time. I just can't ever get the name of it right. But this is basically when I hold the dryer really, really far away from Taddy's body and it sort of creates a big circle effect within his coat. Um, now, when you've got the dryer this far away from his body, you don't wanna move it too much because that is gonna cause uh, strands of hair to tangle and intertwine with each other and then it's just gonna cause tats and mats and make your life more difficult. So when it is open, don't move it that much. Don't actually probably move it at all. It's just sort of giving you a view of what's in there and the moisture within his coat, the impacted hair that's still in there. And then you wanna move it in closer and do that vigorous hand movement again. When it's close, remember, move it so that it's not burning your dog. And um, you wanna do that vigorous hand movement again to really, really loosen up this impacted hair. And you will find the looser it gets, the more you're gonna see it flying around the place. Even in this video, you'll notice it. That's just it becoming loosened and finally frame itself. It's now loosened and it's flying out all over the place, which is great. You really, really wanna see that. You'll know if you're seeing it fly around the place that this is working and you're gonna have a successful undercoat removal. So a technique I'm gonna use now is absolutely brilliant for any long-haired dog, like the likes of your last abs, your collies, etc. It is called fluff drying, and basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your finishing or your stand dryer and you're gonna position it so that it is kind of far away from your dog and creating that circle effect like I talked about again. I'm gonna use my firm slicker and some Amazing Trick Spray. I'm using the Amazing Trick Spray as a condition spray, which it is just to work it through the coat and brush it through because it leaves such an amazing finish. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna let your stand dryer or your finishing dryer create that circle effect and you're gonna get your brush and you're gonna brush in the directions that the hair is going. So you'll see me brush it down and across and then sometimes even up. This just really creates your dog to look like a complete, when he looks like Teddy, like a complete furball. But it is really, really beneficial for removing any excess moisture from the coat, which you don't want because excess moisture left behind can create hot spots. And these are really, really painful for your dog and really irritating. And second of all, it's really beneficial in letting you see what impacted hair or what undercoat is still remaining, like right down on the surface. Um, I find using my firm slicker, I do use it very gently, but using my firm slicker is great for this because it's still drawn out undercoat, even just when I'm 
just trying to complete drying the dog and not even focusing on other coat removal yet. So it's sort of always thinking of techniques that are gonna help you with your next step. So I'm doing this fluff drying, but I'm also removing undercoat, which is what I am moving on to next. So it's really beneficial for me and for Taddy. Thanks for watching part one of my groom with Taddy. Make sure you tune into part two to find out how I brushed him and then went on to style him.